Dear students, I am Dr. K. M. Kadirishan, Director, Center for Graph Theory, Ayanadar Janaki Ammal College, Sivakasi. In this video, we exhibit how the quotient groups are useful in proving two main theorems in group theory, namely Cauchy's theorem for abelian groups and Silo's theorem for abelian groups. We use this presentation here because it does illustrate effectively many group theoretic concepts. First, we recall the following results to prove two main theorems. If G has no non-trivial subgroups, then G must be finite or prime order. That is, if singleton G and G are the only subgroups of G, then the order of the group is finite and the order is a prime number. If G is a finite group and A is an element of G, then A power order of G equal to E. So, if we raise order of the power A, order of G to any element A in that group, the answer is E. Now, if P is a prime number and if P divides the product A into B, then P divides A or P divides B. So, if P divides the product of two integers, then P divides at least one of them. Now, if N is a normal subgroup of G, and if Na is a right coset, then Na whole power M means Na into Na into Na up to M times. And using the definition Na into Nb equal to Nab, this Na whole power M becomes Na power M. And the next result is right coset Na coincides with the M if and only if A belongs to M. That means if A does not belong to N, then Na and N are different. If A is an element of G and A power M equal to E, then don't say that order of A is M, because M is the least positive integer such that A power M is equal to E. But here, A power M equal to E and M is not necessarily the least. So this M is not the order of A. But if a power m is equal to e, then order of a divides m. Now, for every prime p not equal to 7, if p is not a divisor of order of g, that means pi is not a divisor of order of g, 2 is not a divisor of order of g, 3 is not a divisor of order of g, 11 is not a divisor of order of g, and so on. So, except this prime 7, all other primes are not divisors of order of G. In this case, what can you say about the order of G? Order of G is 7 power M for some integer M. This M may be equal to 0. Now, if the greatest common divisor of two integers A and B is, is D, then the greatest common divisor is a linear combination of the given two integers A and B. So, D is equal to AX plus BY for some integers X and Y. The product of two subgroups need not be a subgroup, but the product of two subgroups H k is a subgroup even only if H k equal to k h. And the formula for order of H k is order of H into order of k divided by order of H into section k. So using these results, first let us prove Cauchy's theorem for abelian groups. The statement of Cauchy's theorem for abelian groups is as follows. Suppose G is a finite abelian group and P divides order of G, where P is a prime number. Then there is an element A not equal to E such that A power P is equal to E. So, for example, if 7 divides order of G, then you can find an element A other than E such that A power 7 is equal to E. Suppose 11 is a prime number such that 11 divides order of G and corresponding to 11, you can find an element A other than E such that 
a power 11 equal to e. Now let us prove this result using induction on order of g. First we start from order of g is equal to 1. If p is a prime number which divides order of g, then you have to find an element a such that a power p equal to e. But there is no prime number p which divides this order of g because order of g is equal to 1. So in this case you need not prove this result. Therefore we say that the theorem is vacuously true and order of g is equal to 1. Now as an induction hypothesis we assume that the result is true for all groups having order less than order of g. That means if h is any group whose order is less than order of g and if h is abelian and if p divides order of h then within that group h you can find an element a such that a power p is equal to e. This is the induction hypothesis. Now there are two cases. We consider the group g and here there are two cases. First case is suppose g has no subgroups h not equal to Simpleton and g. That means this g has exactly two subgroups. One is Simpleton e and another one is g. There is no third subgroup. In this case, by a result, G is a cyclic group of prime order. So, order of G is also a prime number and it, it is given that P is also a divisor of order of G. So, what can you say about the order of G? Order of G must be the same prime P. So, we have order of G is equal to P. In this case, we can find P minus 1 elements other than P. Okay? And for every such E, a power p is a power order of g because p is the number of elements in order of g. So a power order of g and we have already a result namely a power order of g is equal to e. So we have to produce one element a such that a power p is equal to e. But in this case we have proved the existence of p minus one elements a satisfying the condition a power p is equal to e. Now the second case is Suppose G has a subgroup here other than singleton E and G. That is, singleton E and G are always subgroups. Here there exists a third sub subgroup N other than singleton E and G. In this case, there are two subcases. First subcase is P divides order of N. The second subcase is P does not divide order of N. Suppose P divides order of N. Then, by our induction hypothesis, we can apply the induction hypothesis to this subgroup because as G is abelian, N is also abelian. Okay, N is also abelian. And P divides order of N. Our assumption is P divides order of N. Order of N is strictly less than order of G. So we can apply induction hypothesis to the group N. By induction hypothesis, there is an element V in N which is not equal to E, satisfying B power P equal to E. Now, since B is an element of N and N is contained in G, this B is also an element of G. So, we have proved the existence of an element B in G such that B power P equal to E. So, this P is our required element when P divides order of N. Now assume that P does not divide order of N. In this case, we use the quotient groups. Since G is abelian, N is also a subgroup. N is a normal subgroup of G. In an abelian group, all subgroups are normal. So this N is also, this N is also a normal subgroup of G. Therefore, we can form the quotient group G by N. Also, order of G by N equal to the formula for order of G by N, order of G by order. And cross multiplying order of G by N into order of N equal to order of G. So the formula for order of G is order of G by N into order of N. By hypothesis, P divides order of G. Instead of order of G, we can write order of G by N into order of N. So P divides order of G by N into order of N. P divides the product of two numbers. So P divides at least one of them. But P does not divide order of N. This is our assumption. Therefore, only possibility is P divides order of G by N. 
since g is abelian g by n is also abelian and the order of g by n is equal to order of g by order of n which is little less than order of g therefore we can apply induction hypothesis to this group g by n the elements of g by n are right cosets so there is an element namely a right coset nb in g by n such that its pth power nb all power p equal to the identity element of g by n here the identity element of g by n is n so nb all power p is equal to n and this nb is not equal to the identity element it means nb is not equal to n now from nb all power p equal to n we get n b power p equal to n we know that n a equal to n if only if a belongs to n so b power p belongs to n also n b is not equal to n implies b does not belong to n now by an application of lagrange's theorem we have b power p whole power order of n is equal to e that is b power order of n into p equal to e now let c is equal to b power order of n therefore c power p c is equal to b power order of n so c power p is b power order of n whole into p which is equal to e so c power p is equal to e so we have produced an element c in g such that c power p equal to e but we want to produce an element c other than e so let us prove that c is not equal to e what will happen if c equal to e if c equal to e then uh, here c is equal to b power order of n so b power order of n equal to e now let us find n b whole power order of n this is equal to n b power order of n but b power order of n is e so this is equal to n b n e is n so n b whole power order of n equal to n we know that if a power m equal to e then order of a divides m in this way order of this n b divides order of n so order of n b divides order of n but order of n b is p so p divides order of n which is a contradiction because in this case we assume that p does not divide n so this contradiction arises arises because of the assumption c equal to e therefore c is not equal to e already c power p equal to e so this e is the required element so we have proved the cauchy's theorem for abelian groups next let us prove the silos theorem for abelian groups the statement of silos theorem for abelian groups is as follows if g is an abelian group of order order of g and if p is a prime number such that p power alpha divides order of g and p power alpha plus 1 does not divide order of g then g has a subgroup of order p power alpha that means if alpha is the highest power of p that divides order of g then this g has a subgroup of order p power alpha so we have to exhibit a subgroup of g containing exactly p power alpha elements now if alpha equal to 0 then uh, you have to produce a subgroup of order p power 0 p power 0 means 1 so you have to produce a subgroup of order 1 trivially singleton e is a subgroup of g of order 1 so in this case the result is true so assume that alpha is not equal to 0 by hypothesis p power alpha divides order of g that would p is also a divisor of order of g so we can apply cauchy's theorem for abelian groups by cauchy's theorem there exists an element a other than e such that a power p equal to e using a we construct a new set s s is set of all x in g such that x power p power n equal to e for some integer n so we are n is a variable now what is the nature of this set s here we have proved that a power p equal to e so a power p power only equal to e so taking n equal to 1 we see that this a satisfies this condition so your a belongs to s and a is an 
not equal to E. Therefore, your S is not equal to singleton. Let us show that S is a subgroup of G. Since G is finite, to show that S is a subgroup, it is enough to show that it satisfies the closure axiom alone. So we take two elements x and y in S. If x belongs to S, then x power 3 power n equal to E for some n. And y belongs to S implies y power p power m equal to e for some m. Now let us find x y whole power p power n plus m, which is equal to x power p power n plus m into y power p power n plus m. Because in the case of a Boolean group, x y whole power m means x power m y power m. But x power p power n itself is equal to the identity element. Therefore, x power p power n plus m is also equal to e and the second element is also equal to e. So, the product equal to e. Therefore, by the definition of s, the element x, y belongs to s. Because for some number n plus m, x, y whole power p power n plus m equal to e. Instead of this m, here we consider n plus m. Instead of x, here we have x, y. Therefore, x, y is an element of G. So, S is closed with respect to that. Therefore, S is a subgroup of G. So, we have constructed a subgroup. Now, let us find its order. We claim that order of S is equal to P power some beta, where beta is an integer, such that 0 is less than beta, is less than or equal to alpha. Suppose Q is a prime other than Q. What will happen if Q divides order of S? If Q divides order of S, we can apply Cauchy's theorem for abelian groups. By that theorem, we can find an element C not equal to E in S, such that C power Q equal to E. But C is an element of S. So by the definition of S, C power P power N equal to E for some N. Now consider the numbers p power n and q. Clearly they are relatively prime because the only divisor, divisors of q are 1 and q. And this q is not a divisor of p power n. Therefore, the only common divisor of p power n and q is 1. So they are relatively prime. Therefore, 1 is a linear combination of p power n and q. So lambda q plus mu p power n is equal to 1 for some integers lambda and mu. Now c can be written as c power 1 and instead of 1 we can replace this linear combination. So c power lambda q plus mu power p power n which is equal to c power q all power lambda into c power beta power n all power mu which is equal to c power q is also equal to e and c power p power n is also equal to e. So the product is also equal to E. So we conclude that C equal to E, which is a contradiction since C is not equal to E. Therefore, there is no prime number Q other than B such that Q divides order of S. So P is the P, P may be a divisor of order of S, but we don't know whether P is a divisor of order of S. And all other prime numbers are not a divisor of order of S. Therefore, order of S equal to P power some beta for some beta. This beta may be equal to 0. Now, since S is a subgroup of G, order of S divides order of G. And order of uh, P power alpha, alpha is the highest power of P that divides order of G. Therefore, this p power beta, this beta must be less than or equal to alpha because alpha is the highest power of p that divides order of g. Now our claim is uh, beta is equal to this alpha. Suppose beta is less than alpha. Consider the abelian group g by s. Order of g by s is order of g by order of s which is equal to order of g by order of s is p power beta or beta is less than alpha. By cross multiplying we get order of g equal to order of g by s into p power beta where beta is less than alpha. Note that 
அல்வா இஸ் தி ஹையஸ்ட் பவர் ஆஃப் பி தட் டிவைட்ஸ் ஆர்டர் ஆஃப் ஜி பட் இயர் பீட்டா இஸ் லெஸ் தன் அல்வா ஸோ திஸ் ஆர்டர் ஆஃப் ஜி பை எஸ் கண்டைன்ஸ் அட்லீஸ்ட் ஒன் பி வித் இன் தட் நம்பர் தட் மீன்ஸ் திஸ் பி டிவைட்ஸ் திஸ் ஆர்டர் ஆஃப் ஜி பை எஸ் ஸோ பி டிவைட்ஸ் ஆர்டர் ஆஃப் ஜி ஜி பை எஸ் நவ் வி கேன் அப்ளை தி இண்டக்ஷன் ஹைபாத்தசிஸ் The, the uh, since p divides order of g by s there exists an element sx belongs to g by s such that sx is not equal to s and sx p power n equal to s for some integer n greater than 0 but s equal to sx whole power p power n which is equal to sx p power n therefore x p power n belongs to s because n a equal to n if only if a belongs to n using that result x power p power n belongs to s and we know that if a belongs to g then a power order of g is equal to identity so here x power p power n belongs to s so x power p power n whole power order of s equal to n that means x power p power n or power order of s is b power beta which is equal to e that is x power p power n plus beta equal to e so by definition of s this x belongs to e since x belongs to s sx equal to s itself which is a contradiction since sx is not equal to s therefore this beta must be alpha therefore order of s is equal to p power beta but beta is equal to alpha so order of s is equal to p power alpha hence s is the required subgroup of order p power alpha so in this case we have exhibited a subgroup of order p power alpha now as a corollary if g is abelian of order order of g and p power alpha divides order of g p power alpha plus 1 does not divide order of g then there is a unique subgroup of order p power alpha in the previous theorem we have proved the existence of a subgroup order p power alpha here we prove the uniqueness when g is abelian what will happen if s and t are two subgroups of order p power alpha suppose s is not equal to t since g is abelian s is equal to t s so s is a subgroup of g now order of s is equal to order of s into order of t by order of s intersection t order of s is p power alpha order of t is p power alpha divided by order of s intersection t since s is not equal to t this s intersection t is a subset s intersection t is a subset of s of course s intersection t is a subset of subgroup of s so order of s, s intersection t is strictly less than p power alpha because order of s is equal to p power alpha and this s intersection t is a proper subset of s so order of s intersection t is less than p power alpha and hence order of s t equal to some p power gamma and note that here there is a p power alpha and another p power alpha and in the denominator we have a power of p which is less than alpha therefore this factor the product is equal to p power some gamma where gamma is strictly greater than since s t is a subgroup of g by lagrange's theorem order of s t divides order of g so p power gamma divides order of g note that gamma is greater than alpha but alpha is the highest power of p that divides order of g where gamma is greater than alpha and p power gamma divides order of g which is a contradiction therefore s is equal to t this result that is the uniqueness holds only in the case of abelian group that result is not true for non abelian groups for example consider g is equal to s3 which is a non abelian group and order of g is equal to 6 6 equal to 2 into 3 and the highest power of 2 that divides x is 1 so 2 power n divides order of g but 2 square divides order of g so in this case if the group g is abelian then there exists a unique subgroup of order 2 but in this case we can find three distinct subgroups of order 2 for example h1 equal to i comma 1 to 
h2 is equal to i comma 1 3 h3 is equal to i comma 2 3 these are the subgroups of order 2 within this s3 so the uniqueness part does not hold in the case of non abelian group now these are some of the assignment problems prove that a group of order 9 is abelian if g is a non abelian group of order 6 prove that G is isomorphic to S3. Let G be the group of real numbers and the addition, and let N be the subgroup of G consisting of all the integers. Prove that G by N is isomorphic to the group of all complex numbers of absolute value 1 under multiplication. So, in this presentation, we have proved two main theorems, namely. Kachi's theorem for abelian groups and Silo's theorem for abelian groups. Thank you.